and welcome to x-ray review in this video we're going to go through 10 different arthritis cases seen on x-ray case number one this is a good example of severe degenerative spondylosis or severe degenerative arthritis of the cervical spine Degenerative spondylosis, also known as spinal osteoarthritis or degenerative disc disease, is a condition characterized by the degeneration of the spine's intervertebral discs and facet joints. This degeneration is typically associated with aging, wear and tear, and changes in the spinal structures over time. Case number two. This is a good example of ankylosing spondylitis in the cervical spine with marginal syndesmophyte formation and fusion of the cervical vertebrae as well as posterior element fusion of the facet joints. AS is a chronic inflammatory arthropathy or seronegative spondyloarthropathy which results in fusion of the spine, sacroiliac joints, and axial skeleton. Case number three. Gout can present on x-ray with large soft tissue swelling and well-defined punched out erosions with sclerotic margins and a marginal and juxtaarticular distribution. Gout is a type of inflammatory arthritis that occurs when there is an accumulation of uric acid crystals in the joints. When the uric acid levels become too high, crystals can form and deposit in the joints, causing inflammation and pain. Case number four. This is severe osteoarthritis with secondary osteochondromatosis. You'll notice severe loss of the femoral tibial joint space and a large collection of ossification within the superior recess of the knee. Osteochondromatosis is an abnormal proliferation of the synovial membrane cells, leading to the formation of multiple cartilaginous nodules or loose bodies within the joint. These nodules can detach and float within the synovial fluid inside the joint. Case number five. This is an example of neuropathic arthropathy with chronic osteomyelitis. Here there are hypertrophic changes to the first metatarsal tarsal articulation as well as atrophic destruction of the third metatarsal phalangeal joint. Neuropathic arthropathy is a progressive degenerative condition that results from nerve damage and is most commonly associated with diabetes. The underlying cause of neuropathic arthropathy is often a loss of sensation in the affected joints due to the nerve damage. Normally, pain and sensation act as a protective mechanism that prevents excessive stress or injury to the joints. However, in a neuropathic arthropathy, the lack of sensation can lead to repeated trauma and stress on the joints without the person being aware of it. The condition can progress to joint deformities, fractures, and instability. Case number six. This is a good example of rheumatoid arthritis demonstrating ill-defined, eroded articular margins of the radius and capitular surface of the humerus, as well as distension of both the anterior and posterior fat pads, suggestive of an inflammatory arthritis. 
Rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease that selectively targets synovial joints throughout the body, creating a widespread polyarticular inflammatory reaction. And this most commonly affects the hands, the wrists, the feet, and cervical spine. Case number seven. This thick flowing hyperostosis seen anterior to the cervical spine is consistent with DISH or diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis. DISH is a condition characterized by the ossification and overgrowth of ligaments and tendons that attach to the spine. This results in the formation of bony outgrowths or osteophytes along the anterior and lateral aspects of the spine. Unlike traditional osteoarthritis, DISH primarily affects the ligaments and tendons rather than the joints themselves. Case number eight. This is a good example of degenerative joint disease. DJD in the hands typically involves the dips and pips while sparing the metacarpal phalangeal joints. Degenerative joint disease, also known as osteoarthritis, is a common condition characterized by the progressive breakdown of joint cartilage in the underlying bone. It is the most prevalent form of arthritis and tends to occur more frequently with age. While it can affect any joint in the body, it is most commonly in the knees, hips, hands, and spine. Case number nine. The linear soft tissue calcification seen in the femoral tibial joint spaces is consistent with chondrocalcinosis, often seen with calcium pyrophosphate deposition disease. CPPD is a condition characterized by the deposition of calcium pyrophosphate crystals in and around the joints, leading to inflammation and joint damage. CPPD is also known as pseudogout because its symptoms can mimic those of gout, which is another type of crystal-induced arthritis. Case number 10. This is an example of hemochromatosis. A few radiographic findings consistent with hemochromatosis are the deposition of iron deposits within the soft tissues as well as hook-like osteophyte formation on the digits. Hemochromatosis is a hereditary disorder characterized by the excessive accumulation of iron in the body. This condition leads to iron overload, which can result in damage to various organs and tissues over time. And thank you very much for listening and making it this far. If you did, uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And any questions or comments, please put them below. Thanks again.